Fishing is a hobby as old as time itself. Although today's world is advancing so quickly, the secrecy around fishing is one thing that has remained the same. How often have you tried to learn from friends or people online only to be met with answers like, I caught this fish in the lake, I hooked it in the mouth, or it bit my secret lure. The majority of anglers are not willing to share their knowledge as they have spent their entire fishing career learning the spots, lures, and tricks that work for them. This makes it impossible for new anglers to join the sport and enjoy all fishing has to offer without a serious time commitment and steep learning curve. In today's world, the most powerful tool anyone can have is quality information. Success ultimately comes down to the, the decisions you make and the difference between a good and bad decision is as simple as the quality of information you have available at the time. Our mission is to help you become a more successful angler by providing the knowledge you need and how to apply it to the situations you may encounter while fishing. Our Zero to Hero Fishing Masterclass has been put together from over 25 years of focused and strategic fishing adventures. By completing this course, you will learn how to fish like a pro no matter where you fish by making smart, informed decisions without having to spend a lifetime on the water learning it. Welcome to Module B4, Understanding Fishing Gear. This module will focus on fishing gear as a whole. You will get an overview of what fishing gear is on the market today, how to select between the different gear, and what you really need to go fishing. While the technology has certainly developed over time, the basic setup for fishing has not changed since the start of the sport. To go fishing, every, every angler needs the basic elements, a rod and reel, line, and a lure or live bait. When you put all this together, you have a tool that can help you catch fish. The important thing anglers often forget is that fishing gear are just tools. No matter how many tools you have at your disposal, if you don't know how to use them or use the wrong tool for the job, you're not going to be very successful. Often the secret lure most anglers brag about is just the best tool for the situation they're in. You absolutely do not need to buy expensive gear to enjoy success while fishing. There are benefits to purchasing more expensive gear, but as a beginner angler or someone who does not fish frequently, it is not needed. There are plenty of quality products that are affordable. Do your research to get the best bang for your buck. Sticking with big name companies will usually give you the best value, but there are a lot of lemons out there as well. Here at New Wave Fishing Academy, we never spend more than $250 on a rod and reel setup and are on the water all day, every weekend from season opener to season closer with no company complaints or desire to purchase more expensive gear. For us, the only exception for this is big pike or musky gear where the baseline costs are just much higher, but you can still target them with more affordable options. Let's go over some of the parts of the rod. We have the tip, the line guides, which control line leaving and coming back to the reel, the handle, which your reel attaches to and allows you to uh, retrieve the line, and the butt end of the rod. There are a few important considerations when purchasing fishing rods. Different rod features make it a tool for a different job, so knowing that these what these features are and how they can benefit you will help you pick the best rod for you. The length of the rod impacts an angler's ability to catch fish in a number of ways. Longer rods will allow longer and more accurate casts. They give anglers more leverage when setting the hook and playing fish, as well as more play or buffer, which prevents the fish from throwing uh, the hook. The downside to longer rods is that they are more difficult to handle, harder to store, and require more free room around to make casts. Longer rods will make it more difficult to impart small actions or movements to a bait, and this can tire out anglers more quickly with baits that do require a lot of action to be imparted. In general, shorter rods are more stiff than longer rods of the same power, uh, and shorter rods offer less control over the fish and shorter casting distances. Any technique which requires imparting small movements to a bait may be better suited for shorter rods. Jerk baits are the most common bait which, this will, which anglers will benefit from using shorter rods. Although the overall rod length is important to consider, the length of the butt end of the rod or the distance from the reel attachment to the end of the rod is also vital to the techniques being used. A short uh, butt end requires that all the force you're fighting and setting the hook comes from your wrist. 
This may be okay for smaller game fish, but once you begin targeting larger species like lake trout, pike, or muskie, anglers will need much more force from the rod to fight the fish and drive thicker hooks into their mouths. Extending the length of the butt end will allow anglers to position it under their arm or against the side of their torso when setting the hook and fighting fish for added power and control. The power of the rod indicates how stiff the rod is going to be or how much force it's going to take to make that rod bend. Different manufacturers have different ratings for the uh, power of the rods that they sell so you should be sure to also take a look at the power of the rod but also the lure recommendation. The lure recommendation weight rating will give you an idea just how stiff that rod is going to be in comparison to other rods that also have listed the same powers. The power of the rod can be uh, classified as ultralight, light, medium, medium heavy, heavy or extra heavy depending on the manufacturers. The more light the rod is, the easier it will be to bend that rod while the more heavy the rod is the stiffer that rod will be and more difficult it will be to make it bend when targeting different fish species you'll want to adjust the power of your rod to the fish species at hand you don't want a rod that is too stiff for fighting a fish because you want the rod to bend in order to give yourself some play and buffer when fighting that fish so that it isn't just pulling straight against something that is immovable and can, they can rip holes in their mouth, bend hooks out, or break your line. You want the rod to be able to uh, play that fish and cushion their head shakes and their runs in order to get the fish in the boat. So when you are targeting smaller fish species uh, like panfish, crappie, uh, perch, um, or sunfish, You'll want to use those ultralight style rods, while if you are targeting larger fish species like muskie, pike, or lake trout, you definitely want to be moving up into the heavy or extra heavy power class. The power of the rod is not only important for fighting the fish species, but also for the lure that you are using. If you are using a large heavy lure, you are going to need that heavier action rod just to use the lure effectively rather than using a smaller or lighter action rod you may not be able to throw that lure as far work it as well and you may have trouble setting the hook so when you are fishing larger heavier baits you want to consider going up in your power of the rod being used even if you are still only targeting a small a smaller game fish species the action of a fishing rod is how the bend of the rod is characterized. It's really where that bend point is going to be. Slower action rods uh, have a, a bend point closer to the reel handle, whereas uh, faster action rods have that bend point closer to the tip. What this means is that when you start applying pressure uh, or weight at the end of the fishing rod, the angler isn't going to feel that weight until it reaches the bend point. When using these slower action rods, this means that you're not going to feel a fish's bite until it has a lot more pressure on that rod, and so you won't have as sensitive a feel of what's going on. But once you do uh, feel that bite, there's a good chance that the fish has that bait already in their mouth and they're probably not going to get off once you do set the hook. On the other end, using fast action rods allows you to feel absolutely everything that is going on, all the little nicks and bumps and nibbles that a fish uh, might give you. However, when the fish does grab the line, it immediately feels that pushback from the rod as it's not wanting to bend at all. There is no give in there. So it may let go of the bait sooner as it can feel that something is not right. Depending on the technique being used, you may need a faster action rod in order to impart the movements on the bait that you want, feel the bites, and play fish once you do get them on. On the other hand, you may need that slower action rod to help ensure that when a fish does bite your bait, that it does get, you do get a good quality hook set, and as well you can 
fight the fish when it does get close to the boat. Some different instances of these are crankbaits versus uh, jigs. When you're fishing a crankbait, it's a straight constant retrieve and so if a fish hits your bait while the, it is moving, you're going to want that rod to load up and allow the fish to grab onto it before it feels any pressure uh, and then you can set the hook. So for this, a more moderate or slow, slower rod will be beneficial as it can grab that bait as it's moving quickly, it can hit it hard and it's not going to feel pressure right away, uh, causing it to spit the, spit the bait or the hook just to bounce out of its mouth from the tension of your rod. If you're using a jig, you're going to want to feel every little bite or pickup of the bait and so you're going to want that extra fast or fast action rod so that you can feel if a fish has picked up your bait or there's any slight nibbles going on. As well with a slower moving bait and a thicker wire hook you're going to need all the power you can get into your hook set and so you want the rod to start having its power as soon as possible when you do set the hook and so the extra fast action rod will allow you to do this. Fishing rods also come in a number of pieces. Most commonly they are one piece rods or two piece rods but for certain travel applications you can get three, four and maybe even five piece rods depending on the size of the rod and just how small uh, it needs to be packaged away. There are benefits to using one piece rods or and fewer piece rods in general uh, mostly due to sensitivity and performance. However, in order to get this, you are giving up on the accessibility factor of the rod. Having a single solid one piece rod will, will give you the most sensitivity and most feel of your bait and the environment that you're bringing it through. It will also give you the best performance as the rod will behave as one object rather than two things connecting together that have to work together. Uh, this also puts a weak point in the rod which can make the transfer of energy more difficult and gives another break point where things can go wrong. So using a more one piece rod generally leads to better performance and better sensitivity. However, uh, this can become very difficult to store these rods, to move them around um, and bring them from place to place unless you do have a truck and boat to keep them in. If you are a shoreline angler, a bank angler, or someone that goes with friends uh, on a lot of outings, or someone that ventures into backcountry lakes where you need to portage, these one piece rods do become very difficult to move and you risk breaking them as you travel through the bush, put them in and out of cars, or um, walk with them anywhere that they could get, could get damaged. So, when selecting a rod, the number of pieces is really up to the application that the angler is going to be using them in. If you are uh, someone that is fishing more often and has the ability to go with a single piece rod, uh, it's recommended. But if you are someone that is doing a lot of adventuring, portaging, or fishing where you need to travel a lot and only have your car to put the rod in, you may want to consider going to a two or more piece rod. In our opinion, reels are more important than the rod. We would much rather spend extra money on a quality reel and put it on a lower quality rod than the other way around. There are two main types of fishing reels that anglers should be aware of, uh, and those are spinning and bait casting. Each has its own benefits and limitations that anglers can take advantage of, uh, and we'll discuss these a little later on. Um, there are a number of important considerations when selecting a reel, whether bait casting or spinning. The first being the gear ratio. Um, the higher the gear ratio, the higher speed of retrieve you'll have, but a lower amount of power. Uh, alternatively, the lower the gear ratio, the more power you have, but a lower speed of retrieve. Uh, this is, you can use these different gear ratios uh, for different techniques when you either need to uh, pick up a lot of line really quickly or if you need uh, a lot of power to pull in large blades or baits with uh, big lips on them. The second important, uh, important consideration when selecting a reel is the drag. Um, the drag is what helps you fight the fish. Picking a rod with too high of a drag pressure uh, for the fish you're fighting 
won't allow you as much control when fighting the fish um, and can lead to more lost fish. You want to select a drag uh, based on the technique and species you're fighting so that you can get a smooth drag pull uh, throughout the fight when it's needed. If you pick too high of a, a drag rating, uh, you won't have be able to fine tune it to a lower setting quite as easily as if you picked uh, one with a lower drag setting. Alternatively, if you pick a reel with a drag setting too low, you may not have any control over the fish you're trying to fight. Uh, the, la the last consideration is the number of bearings. Um, the more bearings a reel has, the more smooth it will be. This is, comes down to personal preference and what your budget is, uh, but normally the more bearings you add, the more expensive the reel will be. Now that we understand the basics of rods and reels, when should you use a spinning gear or when should you use a bait casting reel? Comparing spinning and bait casting gear, there are a number of benefits for each. Overall, spinning reels are much more simple to use and bait casting much more complex. Beginners should always start out with a spinning setup to avoid frustration. Aside from, aside from this, uh, spinning and bait casting reels differ in the following ways. Drag smoothness, max drag rating, casting distance and accuracy, uh, use with light lures, and depth control of bait. Finesse techniques that have thin hooks and require a very smooth drag to keep fish, fish pinned are an excellent spot to note the differences between spinning and bait casting gear. For drag smoothness, uh, the spinning reel has, is much more smooth and so this has a big advantage on finesse tactics uh, compared to bait casting gear. In terms of the max drag rating, uh, for fighting the biggest and toughest fish and when using really big lures or uh, trying to wrestle fish away from heavy cover, you don't want to give the fish any advantage. Bait casting gear um, is generally harder for the drag to start and has much higher overall ratings than spinning gear. Um, when power fishing you need to cover water fast and your ability to put put the bait where you want it without timing uh, are all important aspects especially when fishing tournaments or new bodies of water with limited time. Bait casting gear allows uh, farther casting distance and improved accuracy compared to spinning reels uh, and so this has the advantage in this scenario. Oftentimes when you need to target finicky fish or using live bait rigs or fishing with little kids, you'll be using a lot lighter lures. Being able to cast and control small or light lures uh, is a difficult task uh, for bait casters and can cause backlashes and reduces your accuracy and control. So for applications where you need to use light lures, like when you're fishing with kids, uh, spinning combos are the way to go. When fishing baits that you may want to control the depth uh, by letting line out or reeling it in, um, bait casting gear is not really set up to allow this. Uh, spinning gear, as soon as you open the bale, line falls freely from the spool, uh, whereas bait casting gear, the line needs to pull off of the spool against the, the tension that's already built into it. Uh, and so spinning gear is much better suited for applications where you need good control over the depth of your bait at all times. Fishing line technology is one of the most important yet overlooked aspects of fishing. Your line is what connects you to your bait and the world below. Aside from its ability to help you bring fish in, it can help you determine where structures or cover are located, what the bottom composition is, and help avoid getting snagged. Line selection will also impact the performance of your lure. Braided lines uh, offer no stretch, no memory, the line floats, and is able to cut through weeds. However, it is visible, but allows you to cast much further than other types of line. Monofilament lines have a lot of stretch, a lot of memory, but are much cheaper than alternatives. Uh, the line does float, but it offers uh, a high abrasion resistance 
and can be clear but is not invisible to fish in the water. Fluorocarbon lines, on the other hand, are a middle ground. They offer some stretch. They do have a lot of memory if you don't use them frequently. Um, however, the line, sh the line does sink, has very high abrasion resistance, and is invisible in the water. This makes fluorocarbon line um, the preference for leader materials. When it comes to terminal tackle and hooks specifically, there are countless options for anglers to choose from. It can be difficult to know where to start. So let's go over some of the basics. The hook gauge is the thickness of the hook. The thicker the hook, the more difficult it will be to puncture a uh, fish's skin. The thinner the hook, the more easily it'll puncture. This is obvious if you think about uh, a thick hook like a screwdriver versus a, a really thin hook, kind of like a needle. There are two classifying systems for hook sizes, the number and the aught system. On the number system, the higher the number, the smaller and thinner the hook is, while on the aught system, the larger the number, the larger and thicker the hook is. Um, let's first distinguish between hooks and jig heads. Unlike hooks, jig heads have some sort of weight at the location of the line tie to the hook, uh, whereas hooks have no added weights. There are a number of different hooks on the market today, uh, which are suited for all the applications an angler, an angler can dream of. We will give you a short summary of the hook types and where they are best suited for. This does not mean they can't be used elsewhere, just that this is where they excel best. Aberdeen hooks are a, just a simple bait hook. They're not used in many applications, but uh, for live bait rigging and sometimes as a trailer hook on spinner baits, uh, this is the most common application for these hooks. Uh, the extra wide gap hook is one of the most common hooks for largemouth fishing and fishing around weeds. It allows you to Texas rig a bait, uh, a soft plastic bait, so that it can be fished through weeds uh, without being prone to snagging. Uh, this is very beneficial uh, and is great for new anglers as they can get in tight to cover without worrying about being hung up or stuck. The drop shot hook uh, is made specifically for techniques, finesse techniques like drop shotting, Nico rigging, um, amongst others. It's a very small hook with a very fine sharp, uh, very fine points that gets into fish's mouth very easily. The circle hook is made specifically for live bait or dead bait fishing. The, the circle hook doesn't need to be set and it, it's uh, self-setting so when fish grab onto it uh, that are feeding on bottom uh, they become hooked instantly and the angler just has to reel them in. They, do, they don't need to perform a hook set. Treble hooks are, are typically used on hard baits um, but they can be used with soft plastics as well uh, as, as a stinger hook or uh, to improve your uh, hookup percentage. Belly weighted hooks uh, work are similar to Texas or EWG hooks which allow you to get a Texas rig or weedless presentation. Uh, the benefit of using the belly weighted hook is that you can fish the bait a little deeper, a little faster, uh, all while maintaining that horizontal fall presentation when you stop. Um, alternatively, any jig heads will add weight so that you can fish baits faster, deeper, uh, and feel contact with bottom, but since the weight is towards the head of the bait, you won't have a horizontal fall. You'll have a very head first fall uh, down to bottom. There's a lot of different jig heads on the market today, uh, each that has its own benefit. Uh, the kind of all round, all purpose jig head is the round ball. It, it works well in a lot of situations, but doesn't excel really in any. Um, similar to that is the Google Eye jig, which is pretty much a round ball jig head with rattles inside. Um, alternatively, for swim baits that you want an extra weight on, uh, there's swim bait heads designed for that. Uh, the swim bait head as well as the underspin uh, has a more streamlined profile that allows the bait to swim at depths uh, while picking up speed um, and not rising too high in the water column. Other jig heads like uh, the football head jig have a very wide base so that you don't get stuck in rocks uh, when you're dragging along bottom. Uh, something like the mushroom head jig uh, is used for a finesse presentation where you're going to want to move the bait in place a lot. The mushroom head allows the hook 
and the bait to stand up on itself uh, to give that presentation of the bait coming up off bottom. So there's a number of different options available to the angler um, and you can really just use these as tools to present your bait uh, to fish in different scenarios the best way possible. Snaps are a piece of terminal tackle that make it easy to quickly switch lures. Unfortunately this does add more hardware to your bait that the fish can see uh, and poor quality snaps can easily break or open up uh, when under tension uh, or from big fish f uh, biting the line. There are a lot of designs that we do not trust for targeting anything larger than small panfish um, and if a snap is needed to be used we recommend using st uh, stay lock snaps, a solid ring instead of the snap or just tie directly to the line. Most snaps also have barrel swivels attached to them uh, which will prevent line twists and this is a must when using uh, spinners or bucktails. Some other items like stops can go on the line and are adjustable. They're used with slip floats uh, and line through weights to help pin that bait to your hook point at a certain location. Floats are another piece of terminal tackle used when fishing with live bait to hold the bait at a set distance under the water as well as act as a bite indicator. There are a couple of different styles of clip-on floats as well as line through options. The line through option is best when targeting larger species as there is no additional pressure or crimps on the line from the float and so it's less likely to break. Unfortunately it also takes a lot more work to set up initially. To set up a, sip, a slip float, first put a stopper on your line. Next, feed the line through the float from top to bottom and then tie on your hook. You can adjust the position of the stopper on your line to set the depth that you want the bait to sit at. The opposite of floats are sinkers. These are used to add weight to your lure and get it deeper or sink more quickly. There are a few different styles of sinkers on the market for different applications. Line through sinker options like the bullet or egg sinker go directly on the main line ahead of your hook. These can be used for a number of different techniques but are most commonly used for Texas rigging or Carolina rigging. The split shot is a small weight anglers can clip onto their line to add some additional weight uh, to either get their bait deeper or restrict the movement of live bait. Uh, one of the newer sinkers on the market is the nail weight which you insert into different soft plastic baits to change how the bait looks in the water and change its presentation. This can be inserted anywhere on the bait to get a different effect. Um, whereas if you were just using a jig head or a bullet sinker, the weight is always uh, at the head or at the line tie location. Bell sinkers are used primarily with drop shot rigs. There are a few different styles, but our favorite uh, for all round use is the teardrop shape as it does not get snagged as often as the others and it provides a, a good feel for bottom. The most important takeaways you should get from this module is that each piece of fishing gear is a tool. Each tool has its time and place that will give anglers a bigger advantage uh, when setting the hook and fighting fish. When purchasing your gear, think about what you are trying to accomplish and where this piece of gear will be used. Is this the best tool for the job or is there another option that will suit, suit you best, even if it's not the flashiest or what the most popular item is? Think about what you need to do and not what people are telling you you need to buy. Congratulations on completing this module and moving one step closer to becoming an exceptional angler. Continue to review the material in this module to solidify your understanding and continue to use it as a reference point for planning your future fishing adventures. Be sure to check out our blog for more fishing tips, tricks, and ideas. The New Way Fishing Academy offers a number uh, of other training modules to help you become a more successful angler and we encourage you to continue completing them. New Way Fishing Academy would like to personally thank you for completing this training module. Our mission has and always will be to help you become a more successful angler by providing you with the knowledge and ability to apply this knowledge to help you catch more fish. In order for us to continue our mission we need to hear from you. If you have comments, questions, ideas, or want us to prepare a module just for you, do not hesitate to reach out. We will do our best to update uh, our content to give you the best information possible. If you're looking to continue your learning on the water with us, we would be thrilled to book a session. 
our thoughts are that there's no better way to learn than by doing. So we offer our lessons while offering you a fishing trip on the world-class fishery of Georgian Bay. We will teach you all you need to know and can tailor our, your trip to suit your needs. Whether you're looking to target largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, northern pike, walleye, lake trout, or muskie, we can prepare a trip for you. New Wave Fishing Academy operates on the eastern shore of Georgian Bay between Perry Sound and the French River. Looking for a fishing vacation? Reach out and we can hook you up with resorts that will offer you the best chance to meet your fishing goals. Whether you're looking for a remote getaway or drive to cottage, all our recommendations are within a three hours drive north of Toronto. Be sure to connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, by phone or email, and at our website. We are always sharing great content, new courses, tips and tricks, and the best catches of our students. New Wave Fishing Academy loves to hear your thoughts, feedback, and questions. If you want to see what the New Wave Fishing team has been up to when we're not providing lessons, check us out on YouTube for our latest fishing adventures and see just what is waiting for you once you unlock your fishing potential.